Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how I made this beautiful buffalo plaid and leopard swirl. So the first thing that we are going to do is of course make sure that you have proper PPE before handling epoxy. I will be using a little extra ink epoxy to apply my glitter from PDB by the epoxy method. I have already sanded and prepped my tumbler and spray painted it Colonial Red from Rust-Oleum. It was a perfect match to Scorpion from PDB. The tumbler that we are using is a 24 ounce plump from the Steel Magnolia. It is a straight tumbler so it is perfect for us to do a full water slide once we uh, glitter and epoxy. So to apply the glitter to the tumbler, I'm using about one milliliter or less of epoxy. And you just want to spread it around until it's like a sticky residue. You just want to get it as thin as possible so your glitter does not pull in any areas and it does not flatten out. Once you have your tumbler fully coated, just set it to the side for a couple of minutes so that the epoxy can level itself out and there are no streaks or indentions before you apply your glitter. Uh, pretty simple, just pour the glitter onto the tumbler. Personally, sometimes I get a little carried away thinking, oh, this is so easy because it's just one glitter color instead of focusing on uh, doing a cool ombre effect or something like that. Um, so do pay close attention to make sure that you get all areas completely covered in glitter. And then what I usually do is just push the bottom of my cup onto the excess glitter that has fallen off. You're going to tap that off and let it sit for about four hours with a little extra ink epoxy. And then you can move directly into applying the first coat. I am going to be doing a full water slide on this. So the key when applying our epoxy is to going to be to get it as smooth as possible. So I am doing a pretty heavy coat. It's 25 to 30 milliliters on this 24 ounce tumbler. Once that is dry, I will sand my top rim and the bottom of my cup and any roughness in between and then do a thin coat of epoxy on top of that and my tumbler will be nice and smooth for us to apply the full water slide. A question that I get asked quite a bit um, for a full water slide is how I get it to perfectly fit my tumblers. Um, I measure from top to bottom and then around. I will take those dimensions and either plug them into an app called Print to Size, which is what you see here. And this is the dimensions that I used for this specific tumbler. Um, you can also put it in your Cricut or Silhouette program and resize and crop the image um, that way to fit your cup properly. But what is important to remember is uh, your dimensions can be different from anyone else's just as they can be different from mine. We may use different size glitter. We might put more or less epoxy on. Uh, so you definitely want to measure that each and every time to make sure that you have the proper dimensions uh, when printing this for your cup. The specific image that I'm using is a buffalo plaid for a straight tumbler from Kylene Designs. I will link her shop below with a little discount code for you guys to go purchase one yourself if you haven't already. I have an inkjet printer, so I printed out my water slide and then sealed it twice with Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat. And I'm using warm water for my water slide. I always use warm water because it makes it a little more flexible. Uh, so it's not as prone to rip or tear while I am applying and it's much easier to round it around the bottom of my cup. You're going to want to get that first piece of your water slide as straight as possible um, and then just turn your tumbler as you are pulling the backing off of the water slide. 
make sure that it is completely saturated underneath um, and your water side is coming off of the paper very easily. This is just going to help move it around on the cup uh, while we're pushing the water out from underneath it. After I get it lined up really well, I'm just going to take one part of the water slide and pull it back just so slightly. And I'm going to take a little squeegee tool and go down that line to make sure that it is stuck and in position and will not move while I'm working on the remaining part of the slide, water slide. Once you have that piece stuck down really well, you're just going to go around the entire tumbler doing the exact same thing and squeegee out any water that may be underneath. If you get any bubbles, um, sometimes that does happen, then that is totally fine. Just leave them instead of trying to really push on them to get that water to move. You can take a craft knife and just pop right in the center of them and take some tissue paper and apply some pressure to that and it will release whatever water is underneath it and then you can just squeegee it down so it will be flat to the surface and you will never even be able to tell that it was there. Once it seems that you have gotten all the water out from underneath the water slide, you wanna take some wrapping tissue paper or a coffee filter and wipe all the excess water off of the top of the water slide. And a little trick that I learned from watching other YouTube videos is if you take a heat gun to the bottom and the top of the water slides, it will really help the glue underneath the water slide dry faster. So you can actually make that adhere to your cup and round nicely over the bottom and the top edges so you don't get any little creases that cause you to have to sand quite a bit after your first coat. So I have my heat gun here and I'm gonna just apply some light heat while pulling the water slide over the edge with my tissue paper. Be careful not to apply too much pressure to your water slide the heat from the heat gun is going to allow it to stretch um, and weaken it just a little bit. So you definitely don't want to pull it to the extent that it's going to rip um, or stretch and cause any ripples in the bottom or the top of your water slide. Once I have completed my water slide, I'm going to let that dry for a good two to three hours to make sure that there's no moisture underneath before I apply my first layer of epoxy. Now for this layer, it is going to be extremely thin, a little bit more than what you would if you were doing the epoxy method uh, for glitter application. And the only reason we're not going that thin is because I don't want to put too much pressure or pull my water slide around too much. But we will be putting the gold swirl on here. Uh, so we definitely don't want it to be too thick to where our gl glitter gets lost or moves around too much in the epoxy. Now how I'm going to make my line, I'm going to take a little bit of my glitter Pour it into the cap and just dab my finger in there and work my way around the cup in a swirling motion. This is just going to give me a base of where I want my glitter to go. because It's really easy to get carried away and then I just end up with a hot mess of a swirl going around my cup that has to be wiped off. Um, so this is a really good way to give yourself a map. Uh, in order to start sprinkling uh, your swirl on. I usually start out by using the shaker uh, just again to get that map of where my glitter is going to go and then once I have a pretty good decent line then I will pour some glitter into a cup and just begin sprinkling it on uh, by hand to make sure that I don't over um, 
I guess heavily put the glitter on it just kind of helps me sprinkle it and ombre it out to the sides by just sprinkling it on with my hands once I complete the swirl then I'm going to give it about four to six hours and then spray with rust oleum matte clear coat to seal in that gold glitter um, I am using a little extra ink epoxy. The dry time may be different from for yours, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, once I have sealed my cup really well, I am now going to paint and glitter my leopard spots. So to do that, I'm using Mod Podge and I will tint the glue with my black and brown um, acrylic paints. And then I'm gonna take a small chisel brush and paint on my leopard spots. Now this you can do by hand or if you don't feel comfortable painting these on by hand, your next step would have been to epoxy over until smooth and then you can lay some decals down. And you can either leave just as the decals or you can paint over top of them and apply the glitter directly to the decals, which is actually how I made my first couple of uh, plaid swirls like this, because um, I wasn't comfortable painting on the leopard spots, but once I got the hang of painting over top of the decals, um, I just began doing it without. So to be careful not to let your Mod Podge dry, just do small sections at a time. Uh, once you finish a section, then take your glitter, sprinkle over, tap your cup off, and then you can begin working on the next section. Now what I usually do is every time I do a new section and apply the glitter, I usually go back over uh, the previous ones just in case any of that glitter has seeped in from where I did these uh, spots pretty thick. And then in the end, I will go back and fill in any spots that I may have missed and then coat the entire, um, the entire section with glitter again. Once I have finished all of the black spots, I'm going to go in with a brown tinted Mod Podge and just dab it in the center of each of these spots. Now I will do the same thing, go in sections and sprinkle it on. Now it is going to look like it takes over your black a little bit, but the, the spots are wet, so we're not going to necessarily brush it off now. But once we have completed this step and allow it to dry for a few hours, then you can go over with a coarse bristle brush um, or something that can brush off the excess glitter and brush it all off and all of the excess will be removed and you will reveal the really pretty uh, leopard spots. So again, once this has dried for a few hours, you're going to want to brush off all of that excess glitter uh, with a coarse bristle brush or something that can get um, all the loose glitter off. And then you're going to spray it with matte rust oleum clear coat. Um, do a couple of generous coats so that you won't have any movement in your glitter once you apply the epoxy on. And here I'm going over with one of my final top coats. The final coats on these usually take anywhere from two to three coats just because we do have raised surface with the leopard spots. Um, if you're going to add any sort of name or decal 
Uh, after this step would be the best time to do that. Um, just apply your coat of epoxy, allow it to dry, then sand um, all over to get any rough little bumps and even everything out. And then go in with your decals and second and third top coat. This is one of those designs that does require a, a lot of extra time, um, but the results are always amazing and absolutely worth it. Um, as always, everything that I have used in this tutorial will be linked in the description, uh, maybe even with some discount codes. Something super exciting is a little extra ink epoxy will be releasing their next mystery box Christmas in July very soon and it will have everything that you need to make this cup in that box. The tumblers, the glitter, everything. So I'm so excited <laughs> for that release um, and it will be mid-July of 2021. So keep an eye out for that. I will list all of their details in the description. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Comment if you have any questions. And thanks for watching.